Are you having trouble picking the right hero for your draft? Do you keep wondering why the hero you drafted seemed good at first but was lackluster in the actual game? Don't worry, because we at Action are here to help you. This is our draft tier list. Before we get started, we would like to thank Swaggy G and Void Gimmick for helping our very own Aviera make the tier list. It's hard to get a decent sample size from a single person since one can only draft so many different heroes. First, let's break down the rankings. S is for heroes which are auto picks as soon as you see them, and generally are good on their own. Being able to pick two of them is amazing, and in some cases having two of the same might push your deck over the top. A tier is for heroes that are really good but require some color synergies. Unlike S tier heroes, they require you to have decent main deck cards to unlock their full potential. B tier is for heroes that are good in general, but some parts of their kit may be lackluster. They could either have low stats, a weak passive, or a bad signature card. C tier is for heroes that you might be forced to pick if you need a hero of a certain color. This might be due to you drafting cards of a color that you don't already have a hero for. Lastly, we have F tier. This tier is for heroes that are pretty much unplayable and you should ignore them no matter what. If heroes from this pool are your last pick of the pack, then you are definitely better off picking the basic heroes. First up on the black hero list, Bloodseeker. Bloodseeker's passive fully heals him after a unit blocking it dies. His stats cannot utilize this passive well because having 6 health means that it's likely that he will die in the process anyways. His passive is good for handling creeps, but that goes against the grain of black heroes being hero killers. His signature card is very similar to Outworlds, way too high costed and too much of a negative to be something positive. Bloodseeker can find his home in certain archetypes but leaves much to be desired, putting him in the F tier. Next up, we have Bounty Hunter. His stats are great, 7 health is actually significantly better than Bloodseeker's 6. While his 7 attack is good, his passive gives him a 50% chance to gain plus 4 attack, so when the dice rolls correctly, he is unstoppable, and can kill most heroes in the game. It feels great when Bounty Hunter rolls into an opponent on the flop and gets you that sweet early gold. Having Bounty in your draft deck will enable you to easily draft expensive items and include them safely. Track is a great early game card, and combined with his high stats will provide you with many easy early expensive items. A great hero on all accounts, sweep up Bounty Hunter in the A tier. Debbie the Cunning, the black basic hero, is the only one of its cycle that does not belong in the same tier as the other basic heroes. This is because, with the help of her passive, she does a decent job of killing other heroes, and on top of that, her signature card can deal 3 damage to a unit. Removal and AoE are premium in drafts, and having 3 average single target removals is a very solid inclusion to your deck. Therefore, Debbie belongs in the B tier. Lich unlike other black heroes, has a high health pool that allows him to survive longer and make good use of his passive. Sacrifice allows you to draw a card by condemning an ally or draw two if it's condemning an ally with six or more attack, which rarely happens. Having a draw engine will help you when you run out of cards in the late game, letting you draw those precious board clears which at that point will be more valuable than melee creeps. Speaking of board clears, Lich has one of the strongest in the game. For seven mana, it deals three damage eight times for a total of 24 damage. On top of that, it gives you initiative too. Initiative, after spending 7 mana, may not always be useful in the same lane, but you can carry it over into the next. A standout hero, Lich, clearly belongs in the S tier. Lion has pretty weak stats. His passive is strong, but a 4 turn cooldown requires that Lion sticks around long enough to use it, which could be difficult with his low health pool. Lion's signature is very average. While an okay tempo card, it's not anything too impactful. Lion is another hero that leaves much to be desired in draft and goes into the F tier. Necrophos, another hero with weak stats but compensated by his passive that allows him to gain health after an enemy neighbor dies. If left absolutely alone, he can end up with a very sizable health pool. Heartstopper Aura, his signature, goes well with his passive, dealing two piercing damage to his enemy neighbors before the action phase, making it stronger than Zeus's passive in the late game. However, Necro suffers too greatly in the early game, and because of this, we put him in the C tier. Next, we have Phantom Assassin. Phantom Assassin has stats that are just as good as Bounty Hunters. However, unlike Bounty Hunter, she doesn't have to rely on RNG, as she always has the plus 4 attack against a hero. So if she lines up against an opposing hero in round 1, she will probably kill it. To compensate for this, Phantom Assassin would need to have a weak signature card, right? Nope. She gets the strongest single target removal in the game. Coup de Grasse condemns a hero for the measly price of discarding a card. Strong stats, passive, and signature, Phantom Assassin definitely belongs in the S tier. Sniper is a very similar hero to Lion in stats. However, his passive, which deals 5 damage with a 3 round cooldown instead of Lion's 4, is a lot better. 
His signature is also one of the best removals in the game. For 7 mana, it deals 10 piercing damage to a unit in any lane. Very fitting for a sniper. Removal on a multi-lane scale makes this card very valuable, and you will get 3 copies of it if you draft Sniper. Due to these reasons, we put Sniper in the A tier. Sorlacon has a very high base attack. Her passive deals an extra 4 damage when she attacks a tower. This might not seem like much, but the damage adds up and works well with her signature. Assault Ladders is an improvement that can be placed in any lane, buffing allies with an additional 2 damage when attacking a tower. Small amounts of damage to the tower usually don't matter, but over time this improvement can sometimes deal more damage than even Bolt of Damocles, while costing significantly less. Sorla, due to these reasons, belongs in the A tier. Storm Spirit has the weakest stats of all the black heroes. He also has a unique passive that will implore you to put him on the third lane, ramping up his attack. It will be kinda hard to get going in a multicolored deck and will be primarily useful in a mono black strategy. His signature is a well-costed relocation ability, but with the linear restriction of black heroes only. Storm Spirit requires a significant effort for a minor payoff and belongs in the F tier. Next up, we have Tinker. Tinker has the much wanted 7 attack, so you will want to deploy him early, even with his 3 turn cooldown passive. Laser deals 3 damage and disarms what it damages, like a free frostbite on cooldown. Tinker's signature card does 2 damage to everything opposing for 3 turns. Remember that area of effect damage is premium in drafts, so getting 3 of them automatically added to your deck on top of his great stats and passive is fantastic. Thanks to these reasons, Tinker belongs in the A tier. Finally, on the black hero list we have Winter Wyvern. Housing relatively weaker stats than her black counterparts, but with a passive that really compensates by providing mobility and a plus 4 attack bonus. The only issue with it is that it is not a continuous effect, like Phantom Assassin and Bounty Hunter. Her signature card Winter's Curse is useful because it disarms a unit and has its allies battle it. Sometimes you will be able to outright kill a hero with this card. A solid hero through and through, we put Winter Wyvern in the B tier. That's all for our Black Hero Draft tier list. Be sure to check out our other tier list videos for the rest of the colors. I hope you guys have a better experience drafting now that you have watched this video. If you ever need to reference back to the tier list for all the colors, we have compiled a full tier list on our website for your convenience. Link is in the description below. As always, thanks for watching and we will see you next time.